One thing I really wanted to ask you, China, um, you like you obviously just got all the swag in the world, given, oh. right? Granted. Have you ever thought about like branding your own clothes or having like, you know? Yeah, I actually, mm, sorry. I actually um, have been planning everything that I do, everything that I'm doing now or, or I'm going to do in the future has literally been planned at least when I was like from 16 all the way until now. And things that I would say, some things have came about like that are just like new, that just came out of nowhere, that was just like, okay, I'm gonna do this new thing, which is like the ice cream. I actually didn't plan that. Um, but there's a lot of things that I did plan to do. So when I made my bucket list when I was 16, um, I said I wanted to have a business and I was young. So the first thing that I put on there was clothing Close. line because <laughs> it's like, ooh, yeah. I'm already making my friend's clothing in um, school. So it was kind of whatever. I actually went to uh, public and private school. And when I went to private school, um, I had to find a way to make my clothes cool. I didn't like that, so I would make art, like, you know, like I would design little things and then people asked me to like, you know, hey, design my jacket, you know, so I would do that. So that was like a reason for putting it on my bucket list. So um, I just went out and bought like screen printers, heat press machines, mm. and um, all sorts of things. So I actually <laughs> don't have to pay anyone to do it. I'm gonna be doing it myself, it's coming out. Um, the line is going to be called Bitchy Billions. I don't know if anyone noticed that I did have yeah, that on my name. thing. Mm -hmm. I kind of like try to like put stuff out there without putting it out Subtly. there necessarily. Um, I have characters um, and things for the clothing line and um, yeah, it's pretty dope, you know? That's cool. That's so um, you were talking about how you were in high school and then like you would kind of like make little stuff. Like what would you do as far as? I would, I would customize like shirts and jackets. Like I would take paint um, I and I would like put your name on the back of the jacket. If you're a football player, I put your number on the jacket. Like all sorts of little random stuff. Like. Um, and you would do this for fun or were you charging these people? I was, no, like dead ass. <laughs> like I was, at first I was doing it for fun because I wanted my friends to like look like yeah. me yeah. like the, it's funny because the school that i went to i was like the only black girl that was like a senior so it was kind of like crazy so i had like a clique of like white homegirls and they were just like trying to have the swag that i had so i was just like cool go get some nikes cool go get some jordans cool do your hair like this wear this jacket and they were just like we just like rocked it out like that it was cool it was fun. <laughs> okay, so, yeah. I'm, I'm excited about that. So, yeah, yeah, because I had to ask. I was like, I know this girl got to have something in the works as far as clothing, because you really, oh, yeah, I can tell that you, you know, you're fashionista or like, you know, you, I love fashion. you like your shoes, your sneaker head. I want Nike to you're, sponsor me. Hat. You heard, you, heard, you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> Nike, holla my girl. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so then when did the ice cream come along? Because I know that when I met you, I actually met you because you walked up to me when I was bartending at Miami Warehouse and you're like, yes. hey, I'm doing an event. Seriously, I was with Jasmine actually. And she was like, both of y'all, I need, I need both of y'all. She walked up to me, but Jasmine is from Tampa, so it ended up just being me to yeah, do it. That was funny. Um, so that's how I met you initially. You already had the ice cream thing popping off. When did you start that? We started necessarily, okay, there's two starting. We started the ice cream in 2016 and that was just pretty much trying to perfect the ice cream, like trying to even figure out like if people were gonna buy it, did they like it? If people were buying it, but it was like, are they gonna continue to buy it? Yeah. So we were like, let's drop different flavors, let's do this, that, and the other. And when we first started, we had styrofoam containers. It was like really like ugly and I hated it, but you know, what could you do? So um, the ice cream started in 2016, but um, I already had planned out everything the first day that I figured out that we were gonna do the ice cream. Like I, the, I went upstairs and like made logos and like found packaging. I made like a little mood board of like what I really wanted. And, um, and I showed my business partner at, and um, he was just like, all right, cool. So we're gonna get there. So basically we took all the money that, you know, we did with the styrofoam containers or whatever. And we went out and bought all the cool packaging. And then that's when we really came out with the ice cream. So that was January 5th of 2017. That was a dope day. Wow. I had, like I was like, my whole day was just like, I was floating on clouds. Cause like, it was just so cool. Like I was like, I can't believe I literally just put this whole thing together. It looked so professional, it was like really cool. So it was just like, all right, cool. 
So launching it like to everyone and being like, all right, this is a legit company in January 5th of 2017. And it was like, I feel like it's been so much longer than I that. know, everyone, it's That's because crazy. we were already selling the ice cream and everybody knew about the ice cream like in 2016. It just it wasn't something that we were, we actually branded. It had no name. It was just like ice so cream. So it became official edibles. <laughs> it became official edibles in 2017. In 2017, yeah. You had no was, name for it. Yeah, we had no name. Like we had the name. Don't, it's not, not that we didn't have a name. Like I say that and it's like, <laughs> we had no name. We had the name, but it, we didn't have the funds or anything to push the name that we wanted to push. So we, we don't want to start calling it something, but still giving out people styrofoam containers with no stickers, no nothing on it. Everything at the time was really expensive. You got to think about it. It's cannabis ice cream, so you got to purchase weed. You have to purchase different CBD, too. That was another thing. CBD is way more expensive than weed. It's just, like, yeah. ridiculous. So we had to do all of that, and it was trial and error. So sometimes we were making batches of ice cream, and it was coming out really bad. Sometimes it would come out, like, good or whatever. So we didn't have money to, like, do everything. So we were like, let's just focus on the recipe. And that's what we did for 2016. Everybody pretty much showed us what flavors they liked the most in 2016 to where when we when we literally came out with the new packaging and the official flavors for the brand it was kind of based off of what sold the most what people were asking for and you know finally we had money so it was kind of like yeah you're able to push that yeah and basically we weren't balling we only had enough money to put back into the ice cream to make it cooler yeah. But that was cool. Yeah. Because it just, it made us happy. Like, that's all I was like, I was floating on clouds. Like, I didn't even care. I was actually really broke at that time. I was broke as fuck. I had to do it like that because I was like broke as fuck. <laughs> because I was taking all my money and putting it into the ice cream. So it was kind of just like, do I eat today? Mm. Fuck, I'm going to do these on my ice cream. Yeah, it was times like that, but it was cool because it was just like, I know I'm going to have some cool shit later. And yeah. that's kind of how I am now. Like, I kind of sometimes I just waste my money on like a bunch of things that I know I need for later. You know what I mean? Like, all right, cool. This machine is probably on sale today, so I'm going to buy it today. I'm not going to need it until four months from now, but I'm going to get it today. Yeah. You know? And um, doing that actually just helped me with the just everything because once I actually just some people don't take chances some people will be like okay I got a hundred dollars today and I gotta pay you know this this and I gotta eat me I was kind of just like I got a hundred dollars I'm gonna sleep in my car I'm gonna eat some ramen noodles even though that's not what I was eating but you get what I'm saying yeah like so it was kind of like just putting your money just towards the right thing. Just and, doing it is kind yeah. of like prepared me for all the stuff that I'm actually doing now because no one my age or no one that I really know um, is real. Like, I would say my age because a lot of my friends that are a little bit older, they have, you know, businesses and things like that. But no one really my age is like jumped out and like opened a store. You know what I mean? And it's just because people, I think, it's not that they can do it because everyone can do it. It's I think everyone's afraid to just do some shit. And I've never been afraid to just do some shit. I just, I'm like, if I'm, I'll figure it out, fuck it, you know? Like, I figure out everything else, so I'm just like, I'll figure it out. And that's kind of like what the ice cream, like, pretty much prepared me for because that all was new to me. Like, no business that I started before this damn ice cream worked. So the ice cream kind of was like what prepared me. Did you know? starting official edibles like did you know that it was gonna be as successful as it is now did you know you know did you know that it was gonna be like a no. thing or were you really just winging it and really just putting all your money into this and just hoping for the best no i didn't know it was gonna be popular i mean i know like weed sells itself so it was kind of just like this right. is gonna be cool but i didn't know it was gonna get me through the doors that i got me through it was kind of like all right you know like it's one thing to already be on scene and on scene for certain things, like I had reasons for doing, you know, doing certain things that I was doing before the ice cream came about. But then the ice cream kind of like made me like on scene, like I was actually going to shit that I wanted to go to when I was getting invited to all these little things that were cool. I was actually getting invited to bigger things and like having big, bigger clients. And I didn't know that was gonna happen, but at the same time, I kind of had an inkling. I would put it that way. Like, 
because it's weed and everybody yeah. likes weed. So back to that. Like, I was just like, this shit's probably like gonna like make me a lot of money. I didn't, it wasn't really like a, like a, I don't know. It just wasn't like what I thought it like was. Like a gonna. career. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't that. I just like, I would be balling, nigga. I like me some this ice cream anyway, so. Make me some money. Yeah. Like, all right, this is cool. And then another thing too, um, that was like the that was like the second thing because the reason the real reason why we actually started the ice cream was because my sister was sick and I was trying to find the her medicine and all that stuff was really expensive and I was trying to find a way to help my mom afford to pay for that so I was like I need to set up something to do that then when the ice cream literally became the thing that it was it was like all right now this ice cream actually I let my mom my mom was like yo she's in pain i'm gonna give her like some of your ice cream or whatever and i'm looking at her like no mom <laughs> like and she's like no i'm just gonna give it to her and i'm just like no because she, she was in high school or whatever but she gave it to her and um it helped like it relieved everything so then at that point it was like damn I can't, I can't stop doing this now. Yeah. It was kind of like still an idea thing. It was like we still like 2016 making the ice cream in the styrofoam containers. But when I realized that shit helped my sister, it was kind of like, damn, China, you really can't stop making this. It's either you know you got to make something in, within cannabis, or you have to have some involvement in, involvement with cannabis because you know this shit helps my sister. So yeah. it was kind of like so many different things. So I was kind of just like this knocked out like five birds with one stone you feel me like which brings me to asking you um what's going on well do you have cbd as yes far? i do have cbd ice cream okay because i've been i i get like swarmed the cbd, the CBD ice cream ice. thing is not for everyone because everyone's not vegan so uh the cbd ice cream we only make it in vegan when we first started making the cbd ice cream we didn't make it in vegan I don't lie about she does a lot have vegan of, like, ice cream. I don't lie about shit. I didn't really know the difference between um, the CBD health benefits and the vegan health benefits versus the THC and the dairy situation. Like, it was like a whole, you know? So when I finally figured it out, I was like, well, if CBD is like kind of what is helping other people, I don't want to put anything that's going to hinder that, which is mm. dairy. So I started making all the CBD ice cream dairy. I mean, uh, vegan. It took a long time to figure that out. We still are figuring it out because, like, you got to think about like all the different flavors, all the different like things that have like. I've had vegan vanilla. I think. Yes, yeah, that, that one was good, but that was like our first flavor. So like now we're kind of like way past that. Like we gotten better flavors, more flavors, but at the same time, uh, dealing with CBD and dealing with vegan people, it's a very tricky, picky thing. So. Mm. you know I can see it yeah yeah and, but you know that's good that sounds good and I know a lot of people how I said a lot of people do um, inquire about like CBD because yes THC is awesome and like how you said it helps your sister and like it helps me like if I have cramps or whatever you oh, know yeah, just the, THC really helps you know however whatever form it is that you're taking it but mm. a lot of people don't want that psychoactive you know like effect like some people do just want to like alleviate you know, whatever pain or whatever. I don't know. Personally, I had a friend. I know I was telling you about my friend that was yeah. really inquiring about the CBD because she has pains. God, I forgot what it is that she has, but she was like really inquiring about that. So it's really awesome that you do that and that you're mm -hmm. more, um, you know, yeah, you're selling ice cream. Yeah, you're involved in like cannabis, which now it's like, you know, oh, it's always been cool. But now I feel like with our generation, it's a lot more cool and like people, you yeah. know, whatever. But you're really helping people. When you look at it, it's like you're actually helping people. I, that's that's another thing. Like um, when I first started selling the ice cream, all my customers were actually people that needed the ice cream. Like it wasn't like um, just to get high, just to get high. When I realized that they were buying it more than anything, I started putting it on social media. And mm -hmm. then social media kind of like went ham. It made me go ham with it. I was like, at first I was like, this is cool. Like we got a couple of people that want the ice cream. But then when I put it on social media, I was like, bro, that's when I was like, we can really make this a thing. And um, I got called dumb. <laughs> Why? Because like we were high. <laughs> we were high when I was, you know, you're like high and like you come up with these ideas. They're high ideas. So people are going to be like, oh, you're whatever. Like they're going to brush it off. But I wasn't just like 
a dumb high ass idea. It was kind of like I went upstairs and literally showed them like, look, we can really do this. So, yeah. Okay. You know, I called my friend like dumb like ten times that day. Anyway, he told me like a hundred <laughs> stupid ideas, and I was kind of just like, shut up. What? <laughs> <It's dumb. laughs> like, what are you talking about? But yeah, you know, that happened. So talk to me about Forty Fourth Cave. Ooh. When are you guys opening? Okay, like so we're gonna barely we're gonna slightly talk about Forty Fourth Cave. Why? Because it's a surprise. Okay, so we're not going to have any release dates. Even though I'll probably know the release date no, before y'all do. No, we can have all of that conversation. Oh, we can. But we can't talk about what's going down in the 44th Cave. Because if okay. I talk about what's going down in the 44th Cave, it can't be like Fight Club. Like, what happens if Fight Club stays in Fight Club? If I tell you now, it's like everybody knows, and then everybody knows. So. Okay, so we want to keep it a surprise. Yes. Okay. And, and it's always going to stay a surprise because the store is a membership-only store. You said that. I saw so it. So it's not even really a store. It's a space. Um, I call it store because it sounds cooler, but um, you can shop in there. It's stuff that's going to be um, available to purchase in there, but granted, it's not really a store. It's like a membership like space. Like You're a creative, he's a creative, everybody has businesses, they can come to our space and do what they do. And that's the surprise because no one's going to know what they're going to be able to do unless they get a membership. Okay. Is your, ice cream, is your ice cream involved? Um, I think it's going to be there. Like I said, it's going to be things like um, that you can purchase, but like that's just like the club. You go to the club, you have the option of buying a soda or you can buy alcoholic beverage. You know what I'm saying? We're going to have the option of buying a soda or infused soda maybe. I don't know. You know, maybe. I'm not sure. You just got to soda. Got to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You guys got to get a membership. The website's going to be up soon. Um, Where can we find this? On your IG? On my Instagram, yeah. You gotta follow um, Chinatown and a 44th Cave on Instagram. Uh, the website's gonna be up soon. The reason why it's not up is because I don't do websites and I'm trying to figure it out for y'all to make it really cool. So I'm sitting there trying to figure out this website. Okay. I don't want to pay anyone to do the website because I have a specific vision and I have realized that every time I try to get someone else to do something for me, they just go way on left field. And I'm like, no, like stay right here in this area. I love your ideas, but it ain't over there. It's over here. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of just like gave up on that one. I was like, let me just do this website on my own. because. No one's getting it. They don't, they, don't, they don't see the vision. Are you still trying to get somebody to do it for you, or are you going to do it on your own? I'm going to do it by myself because there's only one person that I know that would get the vision, but that person is so busy to the point where they're not even going to be able to do my website by the time I need it done. So I'm kind of just like, I'm going to do it myself, which is cool. Like I'm, I'm like basically done with it. I just kind of like am a perfectionist, so I'm like looking at things like, is anything missing? Uh, I think I need to get something else like done here. I need to draw this. Like, yeah, it's kind of like at that point. So, okay. When and when? Um, last thing about the store. Uh -huh. When can we look forward to the opening? Twenty nineteen. Uh, like, no, yeah, twenty nineteen. Like January. I would say like the twentieth. Um, why so far into January? Because I mean, Christmas is around the corner. And um, then people, you know, like people want to kind of like relax a little bit. It's the first, you know, first of the month. I don't want to just like bombard people with like, oh, grand opening after everyone just went through Basil Christmas. Yeah. Then they have to go through this like, no, chill out, go back to work, get your money up because you're going to need it and come back and get a membership and then find out what's popping in there. Trust me, the spot is not a spot that you're just gonna come and hang out. You like, you can do that at home. Like, if you're gonna come and hang out, like, don't come and waste your money because it's not the point of the store. But granted, um, it's it's gonna be it's it's gonna be something that everyone wants to be a part of, but everyone can't be a part of. You know what I mean? It's gonna be lit. I can't really say too much. But I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah. Have you um, have you been like basling? Um. You know what? Do we talk about basil? Because I don't want to offend anyone. Yeah. We talk about whatever you want. I don't like saying hurtful <laughs> things. Basil don't. was whack as fuck. All right. Basil had so much cool ass events that was popping. I was reading through forums. I was reading through all sorts of things, and I was like, all right, basil, basil is gonna be lit this year. 
<laughs> Basel was not lit this year because it was like, I've been going to Art Basel for like six, seven years, like long ass time, very long time. Like I was really young when I started going to Basel and we weren't able to get into anything, but we were, it was, it was basically about the art. You know what I mean? Right. Like none of the streets were blocked off ever. Like that, I didn't even know anything of like a street being blocked off until this year. This is the first year that they blocked off like the whole, the whole freaking Wynwood. Like there I feel was like a lot of no people- No parking, there was no service. It's like, how do you get to and from somewhere? Like you dead ass have to be your own like GPS. You have to know where you're going. I'm pretty sure tourists were like so pissed because it's like there was no service. And I have AT&T, so um, AT&T guys, uh, we should have had service, <laughs> you know? So it was just like really whack with that. Um, they had the garages open. I'm all for paying for parking if I got to pay for parking. But $40, y'all are wilding. <laughs> like, it doesn't even make any sense. Like, when would, when did you ever really pay to park? And if you did, you guys were ducks. Sorry, if you ever did. <laughs> but, like, who pays for parking? Like, it was just really whack. They blocked off everything. And um, I wanted to get, oh, yeah, I, I'm kind of mad, too, because I really want to go to um, Shoe Gallery's little event. Atomic had his, like, shoe release. Like, he was doing some designs on some sneakers. And I drove around for about 45 minutes. I live in Color Bay, so it took me like an hour to get down there anyway. Drove around 45 minutes, couldn't find parking. Wanted to pay for the fucking $40 parking, but it was full. So I was like, finally, when I was ready to pay for it, it was like, it's full. I was just like, what, what do you mean? Like, why'd you guys build this big old garage if it's gonna fill? Like, oh my God. Like, yeah, it was just whack, so I, I, um, I left. Um, the day before that, I got stuck in Wynwood. I was like, you know what, I'm not gonna drive to Wynwood. Uh, I'm gonna Uber, me and my friend, we Uber to Wynwood. And then we got stuck down there because there was no service so we can Uber back. Oh, I had to call a friend and say, hey, Uber us back to my car. Da 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 da, it was a mess. So I was just like, blah. And then I just re I just feel like it's not really about the art anymore. It's I feel not, like, it's not. I feel like it was a big ass block party. And, yeah. and a lot of people take like random events. Like it's something that we were talking about the other day. Yeah. Like a lot of people just like, put random events like anyone or like you go to brick house for basil like you're not not really supposed to go to, go to brick, brick house for basil. for basil you go to brick house for art walk which is every month like come on now get it together yeah, yeah. I, I definitely felt that it was and then the lines for everything were really long for like the local shit like the shit that really shouldn't have been crowded because everybody should be occupied with other shit um what else was wrong because we did go to basil that night so it was like mad shit i was just like Question, where, um, the location of your store, where is that gonna be? Is it gonna be in Wynwood? Is it gonna be no, Miami? It's in, it's in Little Haiti. Um, okay. I didn't wanna do anything in Wynwood because Wynwood is too over, like, overhyped right now. No offense, I love Wynwood, yeah. but it's just overhyped. I didn't wanna do it anywhere else. Like, I was already, like, kinda, like, at that spot for a long time. Like, a lot of people just didn't notice, um, that I was, like, chilling there. Um, and then we just decided to make it into something because it was, we were there. Like, it was like, why not? Oh, dope. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, I think, do you have anything else that you want to say or address? I really just want to know about this store because I've been waiting for this store for like months. I know. Not even <laughs> months. I think it's been like a whole year. Yeah, Everybody's right? been waiting because yeah. it took a year. The store was so dirty. Like, oh my God, guys. Like, I don't like roaches, but they were roaches. Like, I was just oh, like, man. oh my God. And you've been doing a everything yourself yeah like not really everything myself like uh, i have people that help me shout out to y'all y'all know who y'all are um i've been doing everything myself as far as like um division organizing i call the shots like i'm kind of like hey build that hey do that i want to look like that i don't actually get down and do that only things that i actually have done myself were like little creative projects like painting. Yeah. Um, I think I did a lot of painting, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm, I was like the paint queen. That's what I was doing. Um, cleaning, huh? I don't like roaches. <laughs> Let's run back to that one. They're they were everywhere. They were everywhere because it, it was so like unused. Like when we were, we would come there, like we would just come there 
sit down, throw stuff around, like leave. And um, the, the tenant who was there before, they left like soda stains mm. everywhere. Like everything was sticky. So there were roaches and I was kind of just like, ah! So I had to really clean it. <laughs> Dodge them. Yeah. I had yeah. to really clean it out. I had to get like freaking uh, everything exterminated. It was like, it was a lot of work. It was like, I was really dirty. I had to throw away clothes because I'm like, I'm not going to wash these. Like, I'm never going to wear these again. Ooh. It was really bad in there. The walls were ugly. I had to get them redone. Um, I had to get things built. Like, it was kind of, yeah. I'm so excited for your store. I'm going to be checking that out. Yes. Um I'm, I'm happy that you were able to come. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys so much. Thank you so much for being here. This is our uh, jet lag fifth episode. Fifth episode. Thank you so much, China. Thank you. All right, so.